bless you too. Your beautiful wife, is she here yet? Oh, okay, so okay to, to the pastor and his wife, I honor them. And to all the members who have been here before um, under my voice, can you raise your hand? Amen. God bless you. I honor you, my sisters and brothers. And to those who don't know me, I honor you. God bless you. Uh, as Pastor Beth said, my name is Rochelle Glover, and I was, for those who don't know, a president, a vice president of a company, and the Holy Spirit told me to quit and teach what I will be presenting for the next three days. So I am praying at, that you come back on next Sunday and in two weeks on that Thursday. But we are going to go off and running because time is going to fly. Amen? Amen. Also, my husband told me to tell you, hello, uh, Pastor, and he will be here on Sunday, but he had to work. But he did send his blessings and his prayers. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so I want to talk to you. I want to start a little different this year in the fact that it is important that we prepare for tomorrow. Okay? It is important. It is most urgent. If we were getting ready for work, we get up and we say we are getting ready. Am I right? So when we say we are getting ready for work, we got to get up, take off sleeping clothes, put on day clothes, shave or wash our face, do our hair, brush our teeth, go to the restroom. We've got to prepare for work. Amen? And so we have got to prepare, prepare to not work. Does that make sense? And so we've got to prepare to retire. Because by a show of hands, who wants to work forever? Anybody? Because I always imagine that I may work for Walmart. But if they get smart with me or put any pressure on me, I'm going to quit. Because I can, because the money is working for me now. Does that make sense? And it's important, ladies and gentlemen, that we get money to work for us now. So we're going to start off by just having a questionnaire. And I have a lot of paperwork to pass out, so prepare yourself. And it is, for those who don't know, um, thank you, my sister. Um, it is very interactive, so please ask me questions. Scream out loud, we are family, and so if you have any questions, let me know. And I guess I need one, can I? Thank you. And if you, does anybody need an ink pen? Anybody? Anybody need an ink pen? Anybody got one? Okay. So before we even get into the slideshow, I want to ask you a couple questions, and I want you to put your answer, one through ten, on this. One, if you are not comfortable with the answer that you're going to put down, and ten, if you're very comfortable where you are. And so everything that I pass out to you is yours, so you can be absolutely honest with yourself. Okay? All right. Number one, are you comfortable that you will be able to retire when you want to? Having sufficient assets is a pivotal factor in choosing your retirement age. So one being the worst, that you worry to death, or 10 being, I am very comfortable that when I retire, I'll be set. So you mark one through 10. 10 meaning that you're ready. <laughs> and one meaning that I, I feel like I'm going to fall apart if they say retire tomorrow. Anybody need to eat here? Now, here, here's the deal. What, what does the word say? The truth will make you free. Will make you free. And so the situation is, is that we, first of all, got to be honest with where we are. <laughs> And we gotta look this thing in the face. So if you're gonna, if you think you're very comfortable, put in. If you're not comfortable at all, absolutely not at all, one. And then if you two or three, I got a few dollars saved. Or five, I am saving. I got a 401k, I'm saving money. I'm not giving the man all my money. Okay? All right. Number two, that you know how much income you will need to retire. Are you comfortable that you even know how much you need to retire? Because we're going to put pencil to paper in this series. When you walk out of this class, you will know, according to your lifestyle, how much you're going to need to not have to work with being ever. Does that sound good to anybody? Yes. To wake up and say, you know what, I ain't got to do this. I'll tell you what, you can start with me, I'll walk out. Okay? All right. So one through ten on that. Number three, are you comfortable that you will be able to generate income in retirement? Now, when you talk about generating income in retirement, ladies and gentlemen, your money is working for you. Every time you put money somewhere and it is flowing, 
is flowing back to you, you are generating income. If you are sending all your money out to Walmart, to Dillard's, uh, uh, to J.C. Penney's, to, to, to um, the car dealership, that means you are generating money for them. It's really that simple. So are you generating money for you or for them? Answer that question. And again, you don't have to show this to anybody. You can throw this away from you so nobody will ever see it, but you have got to be honest with yourself so that you can be set free. Make sense? Okay, number four. Are you comfortable that you will know where you should be saving your retirement dollars and how much you should be putting away right now? Do you even know where your money should be going? I tell you right now, from this day forward, it should not be going in a regular Bank of America savings account. You are not making any money. You are making money for them. Because while you're putting your money in Bank of America savings account, they are loaning that money out at 10, 12, 14%, and you are making 0.025%. Does that make sense? You got to know what's going to make your money money. And it is not a regular bank account. Folks, they got money. Do not have that money in a regular checking account. Does anybody, was anybody concerned about the fact that two weeks ago the stock plummeted? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? You heard that, girlfriend? You know why we're not concerned? Because we have money in there. We should have been up and out just like those folks are up and out. But when I say those folks, anybody who got money in stocks and bonds and IRAs took a huge hit for the last two weeks. It's coming back right now, but we, by this time, the next time I see you, if the stock plunges, I want you to be concerned about it because you had money in there making money for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, you better, you better get on this train. It's, it's taking off. Okay, you're going to be waving at us because you have got to take care of yourself. Who's going to take care of us, ladies and gentlemen? We have got to take care of ourselves. And to take care of ourselves, we got to have education about where our money is and what's going to make money for us. Amen? Amen. Um, uh, Ecclesiastics 11 talks about having your money cast in different places. God is talking about how you have to cast your money in different buckets. So this isn't anything new. We have got to know that we're supposed to be putting our money up and it's supposed to be making money. Okay? Number five. Um, are you comfortable that you will have the means to realize your retirement dreams? Are you comfortable that you will have the means to realize your dreams? It's so funny. I teach at a um, Union Gospel Mission, a, a homeless shelter. And Wednesday, which was yesterday, I uh, spoke on Joseph, uh, Genesis 37, about him being in the pit and how it all began. I'm my sister. How it all began with the fact that he had a dream. And so say it with me. Dream. Dream. A dream. Yeah, dream. Okay, and the deal is, is that you have got to realize your own dream. And you got to stick with your dream no matter what. If it puts you in a pit, know that you're going to dig out of it because your dream is still going to manifest itself. And to have a dream, you've got to imagine where you're going to be every time. Already imagine. I hope that I'm healthy. I pray I'm healthy. I hope I live a decent uh, amount of years. I'm hoping my sons don't have to take care of me. I'm hoping that me and my husband pray. That me and my husband can travel anywhere we want to. What is your dream? Because you've got to have a dream. So one through five, does everybody have a number in every spot? Okay, and then the scripture on this is Jeremiah 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches, but let him glory in this, that he understands and knows me. And I'm going to tell you why that scripture is so powerful, because I've been talking to the Lord about, am I having impact? Lord, I want to have impact. I want that when I leave, that people grow, that people are inspired. And the Holy Spirit told me this. He said, your job is to grow people. You can't grow anything. Your job is to plant information. And if they acknowledge me and do what the Word says, I will grow them. And I said, okay, that, that, that's rich right there. It takes a lot of pressure off me because I'm going to make sure you get the information and the information is accurate. And then I am going to ask you to do this. It is important that you leverage your power. 
Amen? Amen. It's going to be very important that you leverage your power. And this series for this next three sentences is going to be leveraging your power because you have the power to have everything that God has for you. But it's through him. It's not even through you. So when you say, I want to be better, that I want to do this, that I want to grow, that I want to have money, in Jesus Christ you have to do this. Because without him, we can't get out of the seat. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so we're going to talk about, we're going to start from the, uh, from the back, and we're going to talk about uh, the fact that we have to have retirement money. Because if you're, if you're saving for retirement, then that means you're saving money and you are disciplining yourself. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. Let's start here. Why are you here? I want you to, I'm going to pass these out now, because I want you to write this in your book. When you get your book, I want you to turn to page 24, and it's a note page. Now, with this, this article, 
uh, that I pulled is called Seven Habits, Habits of Financially Healthy Retirees. And when they say financially healthy, they're talking about wealthy people. And wealthy and rich is two different things. When you talk about wealth, you're talking about people that got old money, loan money. You're talking about um, the child who has no talent, um, Hilton. Her, her parents um, Hilton Hotel. What's her name? What's her name? Okay, yes. And with that, they have a ton of money. They are wealthy. So she never had to do anything because this money has been growing for years and years and years. So how do we acquire their habits? Because I'm big with, if something is successful, we got to know to follow what success is doing. All right? And so that's the way to make money, just watch it. And we emanate and do the same thing. So number one is um, start early. Well-to-do retirees say 33.2 years. The rest, they say for 29 years. The rest of the people say for 29 years. So you see number one there where it says start early? So here's the situation with that. If you are 25 years old, I promise you, promise you, that if you save $650 at a 6% interest rate for the next 25 years, you won't have a million dollars. That's hard, cold, calculated. And some of us blow $600 a year, on, I mean a month on stuff. You don't have to raise your hand, just wiggle your toes. <laughs> but some of us are spending it on restaurants, on clothes, on hair, on makeup, on food, you name it. And so with that figure, even if we say not 600 but 300 we have a half a million dollars. So if you have, if you are 25 years old, by the time you get 50, you could be a millionaire. But here's the situation. They're not telling us that on our radio stations. They're telling us to go by Michael Jordan. Amen? They're telling us that we need to go to the concert. We need to go to restaurants. We need to go out to play. They're not telling us to put our money somewhere where we can earn money. And wealthy people have been saving for 33.2 years. Number two, save as much as possible. Financially healthy retirees save 8%, excluding employees' contribution of their salary. The average is 7.3%. If you have a 401k, and you are not saving 10%, I want you to trust God and lift your savings up to at least 10%. It's your money, it will be there. If they are matching four to one, that means for every dollar you put in, they're gonna give you four, you won't, you won't get that anywhere. And then the rest, go to a financial planner and put that somewhere. And I promise you, you will have money when it's time for you to retire. Side note, write this anywhere. When you leave your job, do not touch your money. Let it roll to the next job. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, uh, it says that the average person is saving about 7%, but I've looked at data that says the average person in a 401k is saving about 4 But I encourage you that God will give you the real power to rearrange your finances so that you can put that um, up and still have money left over. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number three, don't rely on your company. It used to be a time that people could live or work at a company for 35 years and retire. That does not exist anymore. So the situation is, is that they are using you as an asset. You use the company as an asset. So I'm here, I'm gonna to work to the honor and glory of God, I'm gonna give you 100%, and when I'm gone, I'm gone. You cannot bank your life on the fact that you will work at that company forever. So prepare for tomorrow, educate yourself, get ready to leave. So if it leaves, it doesn't become a shock. And if you have to leave, you don't wanna jump out of the window because you have money saved. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? Any questions? Yes, ma'am. If you yes, you can. You can get a separate point IRA. You can get different IRAs that allow you. If you are under fifty-five, it'll let you put in fifty-five hundred dollars, fifty-five hundred dollars a year. And if you're over fifty-five, sixty-five hundred. And they have other mechanisms for you too, if you're self-employed. And I'll bring that Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can get a self-directed IRA. Any other questions? All right. Uh, number four. Number four. Okay. Leave your savings alone. You ever got mad at one of your savings? You ever got mad at work and went shopping? Am I the only one? I have got mad at my husband and left and spent money. I, I'm the only one, huh? Okay. 
Okay, okay, thank you, my sister. Stick with me here. And we cannot emotionally shop, good, happy or bad. 12% of wealthy people, I mean, uh, yeah, only 12% of well-off dipped into their retirement. You see that up at number four? Only 12% dipped into their savings. Don't go in your savings no matter what. I, I'm teaching uh, 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 Workforce Solutions in Dallas, and they lost their jobs. I say the only time you go in your savings is about to, if you're about to lose your house. Anything else, do not go in your savings. And then if you got to save your house, save your house. But other than that, you'll get another job, and you'll still have your money intact. And then it says when they reach 21% uh, on average pay. So some people went in their savings, but I am encouraging you not to do that. And then number five, 98% um, of well-off retirees have extra source of income. So you've got to have different full avenues of cash coming in. Write this down. When you retire, you should have Social Security. Am I right? You should have Social Security. Hopefully you are have a company that has a pension, but companies are start stopping pension. Okay, and you should have a retirement like an IRA, mutual funds, 401k, something like that. And then you should have your regular savings account. So you should have at least four avenues of money coming in. It used to be time to talk about this here, that a lot of our money came from the fact that we bought a house, we paid it off, and then we sold it and moved in with our kids. That has always been our heritage. Um, African Americans, African heritage, you took care of your parents. Am I right? Yes. Okay, people aren't even doing that anymore. I can remember my grandmother, my great grandmother, all of them. They lived with my mother and father. And they sold their house and checked this out and kept all the money. Okay, because it was their money. And now we're not buying houses. We don't have equity in our houses. We're not paying off houses. They have tricked us with that um, reverse mortgage. You know, the reverse mortgage is a trick of the enemy. I'm telling you like I feel it. Because what it's saying is that borrow money from your own equity, and when you die, we'll take your house. You should leave your kids something. Here's your house punk and I'm gone. Okay, but they're telling you, you can't beat the deal they're giving you. I, I will loan you $20,000, I will loan you $30,000, and when you die, I will take your house worth $100,000. Always remember, when a deal is too good, it's too good. Does that make sense? Yes. Somebody say knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Amen. All right, number two to six. Use the pros. 88% consulted a financial advisor. My husband hates it for me to say this, so I'll say it while he's not here. The two closest men in my life is him and my financial planner because I am a financial counselor. I have a professional financial planner who does nothing but ensures that my money grows. And if it ain't growing, I will just get in his face because his job specializes in putting my money in avenues that insist it grows. Now I'll tell you something right now of, of the kind of, of, of money that can be had. I started off as a regular bill collector in Detroit, Michigan 30 years ago hired me off the street, I did very well, and I started going, growing up in the company. You want to be a manager, you want to be a unit manager, you want to be a department manager. We want you to interview for vice president of Google in California. I did all that. At the end of the day, I had enough money that when I turned 59 and a half, I would be very wealthy, very wealthy. Why? For putting it in a 401k, for putting it in stocks and bonds, for having enough sense that every time you get a raise, you give you half and you give your savings half. Does that make sense? Yes. So if you get a 4% raise, you did not have it anyway. So don't say you didn't need it because you've been surviving without it. Yes. Make sense? Yes. So if you get 4%, you put 2% in savings, and you put 2% on your back or whatever you want to do with it, right? You get a bonus. You put half in your savings, and you put half on what you want to do for your family. And you make that a habit. Because every time you do it, you say, Rochelle, I am taking care of me. Not seniors, not dealers, not Walmart, I gotta take care of me. Because every time we go in there and buy what we don't need, we are taking care of Walmart, who is already the richest family in the United States. Amen? Okay, so with that, you've got to get a financial planner, and I don't care if you have 35 cents. 
your pastor is talking about this month, your financial situation is going to change. Amen? So this month, I want you to sit in the bay and act like you're a millionaire. Sit down and say, how do I make my money work for me? And normally the bank manager isn't doing anything anyway, and she will tell you about stocks and bonds and IRAs and all of that. Don't be afraid to get in there and talk to them about your money. Because they want you to save your money with them because the more you save with them, the more they make. Does that make sense? Yes. And I promise you, it will add up. It will add up. If I came in here every other week and put five dollars in the middle of this floor, in three weeks you're gonna say, oh my goodness, there's some money. But in about a year, you're gonna be like, oh, look at this five dollars. And I'm just talking about five dollars every other week. In the middle of this floor, if you don't put anything in the middle of this floor, all you got is some squares in the middle of this floor. Does that make sense? Yes. And you have got to start putting some money in the middle of your floor. And I promise you, you will not miss it. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Number seven, make sure your money grows. 48% of well-to-do have a guaranteed escalation of annuity. 28, 29% is the average and only level of annuity average. Now I want to tell you what that means. Level annuity means that you have money that you're saving and you get a fixed income every single month until you die. Just so you know what that is. A level annuity means that here's an annuity, you got a million dollars in the bank and they're going to give you $6,000 a month every single month until you die and then the rest goes to your family if you have something left. An escalated annuity means that as the cost of living rises, your annuity rises. And that's the kind of education we have got to start getting. Because these people are putting, wealthy people are putting thousands and thousands of dollars in an annuity to take care of themselves tomorrow. Now my financial planner um, tells me that I have enough money to last me beyond when I die. My goal, <laughs> God help me, is to not leave somebody a whole lot of money. Okay? I work too hard to not have fun when I retire. <coughs> so Pastor may call me, Rochelle, you call, I'm in Europe, I, I'll call you Pastor when I get back. Rochelle, yeah, I, I'm in China, I'll call you when I get back. Anybody else got a dream like that? Okay, on, on page 24, yellow, I want you to put down one dream. What do you plan to do with your money? Yes, ma'am. So, are you saying uh, escalated and weighted is the best? Yes and no, and I'll tell you why. A leverage annuity will give you more money every month. Okay? The reason, the, the, the pros and cons about a leverage annuity is that it doesn't make up for, for um, inflation. And so I'll give you an example. If you get $5,000 every month and you've been getting it for the last two years, you really, in the 10th year, get the value of about $4,500 because the price of water goes up, the price of clothes, the price of food, and it's not taking account of that. So if you were to get a leverage annuity, get that because you'll get more money, but then put something else in an equity fund that's making money. So if cost of living goes up, you can take some money out of your equity fund and make up for that. Does that make sense? And, and, and when you talk to a financial planner and the notes I'm giving you, go in with some knowledge. Because they're banking that we don't know. Amen? So do your homework. Yes, ma'am. What, what are the equity funds? I know IRA, Roth IRA is one of them. Right. And do it. So which is the, which, which are the equity well, there's a whole lot of equity funds, and what happens is, is that they put, they take your money and put it in funds to make money, but they'll ask you a series of questions. I'll give you an example. Well, the first thing a financial planner asked me was, hey, do you want to take a lot of risk? And I said, no. Exactly. So it depends on where they put your money based on your risk, because you'll make more money in stocks, but it's a higher risk. And you'll make less money on a mutual fund, but it's safer. You'll make less money on bonds, but it's safer. It's exactly. And so when I at 56, I just didn't want to take those type of risks. But if I was 25, 20 years old, young as you in my business, I'll take a risk because stocks are up and down. You're going to take a hit, but all you got to do is ride it because it's going to come back up. Stocks that still, for the last 20 years, have made at least an average of 13, 14%, even through the 9th until the 08 hit and all that. It still has leverage out to make money. But the older you get, the less risk you can take, because at 56, you better not lose a dime. You see my eyes? <laughs> and this is how I talk to him, because I 
I had worked too hard, even me and my sister, boy, don't play. And so with that, I I am a conservative stockholder. I just cannot take the risk. So when the hit hit happened two weeks ago, I look at my money, and this is how much is floating around. That two-week hit, I lost about $70,000. That's a lot of money. So uh, breathe. God is able, he'll take care of you, right? And so just, just let it go. And, and all that money has been recouped except 1%. But we have got to know that and we've got to play the game that wealthy people are playing. Because when it comes back, they're going to make seventy, dollars $100,000 off of our money, off of what we're buying. If you don't have good credit, and we're going to talk about that Sunday, that wealthy person we're talking about in this paper is using the money you pay on your car note to make money. Let me paint a picture for you. If you have bad credit and you go get a Honda and your interest rate is 16%, the wealthy person on this paper has gave their bank the money to make money for them and they're making it up, giving, you giving 16% for that car. Can you picture that? So every time you buy something that's crazy and you don't need it, you got to say, I'm making the wealthy wealthier. That's exactly what we're doing. So we got to stop the madness, and we got to say, how do I play this game, this financial game, so that I can come out? Because it's one thing I, I love about your pastor and his wife. They love their church, and they want to see you healthy. Healthy. Because we are playing a game, and we don't think that when we are down in our money situation, it affects our mind, it affects our physical health, it affects our relationships, it affects, it affects our work. When I go to work and when, years ago when I was in financial trouble, I'm at work and I'm working, but I'm thinking, I gotta pay this kind of some kind of way. The light's about to get cut off. I gotta go get some food and I won't steak. Not, I don't even know how to say it, Roman numerals, noodles. Yeah, those things. And I do like those, but girlfriend likes stuff used to live. I like food, I like chew, okay? And, but you worry about that when your money's in trouble. But God says that I wish that you would be, that you would prosper and stay and be in hell. When he said that in 1 John, he was actually talking to a missionary who he was congratulating for helping the churches and he wanted him to stay prosperous. He wanted him to stay in good health because he was giving to others. We've got to be in that position so we can give to others. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So good question, my sister. Um, number seven, we did that. Make sure your money grows. So I want you to take that sheet and I want you to put it in your packet, and then I want to cover next subject. Stuff about retirement. Any other questions on that? Okay. Now, managing God's money. Can can everybody see this? Can you can you read this, guys? Yes. Okay. The one thing that the world does that we have to change. And we can't do this. In order to first figure out how I have to start money, saving money, you got to do this. The world tells us to acquire. So however you acquire, if you work, you get Social Security, your husband works, whatever it is, and then we emulate. Almost everything we buy, the cars we drive, the house we're in, the clothes we wear, the hairstyle we have, is because we saw it and we wanted it. Somebody say that with me. I saw it, I wanted it. I saw it, I wanted it. That's just the truth, am I right? Yes. So first of all, we got to start off by praying, Lord, let me see what you want me to see. Amen. 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 Let me see what you want me to see. Because the world tells us to acquire it and emulate it, then enjoy it. So we see a dress, we gotta have it. I gotta have it. That's so pretty. And it's so sales. And it fit. Anybody with me? I gotta have it. So then we enjoy it. We wear it. Oh, I look so cute in this. Oh. So we enjoy it. Then we repay it. So then we repay it. We pay for it. We buy something else. Then we save. Then we give. Then we plan. And you know why planning is last? Because after we do all that, we're in trouble. And then that's when we sit and we go, oh Lord, what am I going to do? I got to save now. Oh, I should have put this up. Oh, I got to, I got to rearrange this to pay for this because now this is late. Anybody feeling me on that? That is the world's way. But our way, 
and I want you to write this down if you got any more room on there. I want you to I want you to write this down. First of all, God wants you to acquire and he wants you to dedicate it. Don't you know when, when you get your paycheck, when you get your funds, I dare you, every time you get it, say, Lord, I honor you with these funds. I dedicate this money to you. This is your money anyway. I am a steward over what you have given me. Lord, I wish to get an A on my report card in handling your affairs. We don't do that. But we want to start doing that as of today. What did your pastor say? New finances this month. And you got to start with dedicating it back to him. It's his anyway. Amen? Okay, so you got to dedicate it. Then you got a plan. I dare you not spend a penny until you say, Lord, show me what you want me to do with your money. I don't want to buy a bubble gum. I don't want to buy a bottle of water. I don't want to buy a, a, a anything until you tell me what I'm supposed to do with your money. So then I want you to plan. And then after that, give. I promise to give. I promise you. If you start 100% tithing and giving, you will see a breakthrough in your finances. If you do it already, God bless you. But I tell this story, and this is my third year, so some of you have already heard it. But a girl in Detroit asked me, do I tithe? And I said, well, yeah. And she said to me, that means you don't. I said, we don't have the nerve to say that to so I'm going to tell you my testimony. And so I said, <laughs> and she said, I can tell. She said, the Lord shows me that you're going to be up and coming. You're a young lady. You do well. You're educated. If you give it back to God, nothing will stop you. And I said, I got too many deals. I'm single. No kids. I got a good job. And why do I have too many deals? That's my job. But I'm broke. They said, I got it, but I'm broke it. I, I wish I had enough time to tell you that a lot of our buying is predicated because our spirit is itself. Okay? But well, we have to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So when we're not filled, we're trying to fill it with everything else. Food, clothes, me and stuff, they Okay, we have a women. We're going to talk about that thing. We're going to get a breakthrough with that because that's the issue. Amen, somebody? Amen. 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 Okay. All right. And so uh, when it turn, in terms of giving, she said, start tithing. And she said, I hear you got another bill, a lot of bills, but I want you to trust the Lord. So I'm telling you, I want you to trust the Lord. And this is nothing that somebody tells me or something I talk to your pastor about. This is something that I have lived all my life since then. And there is no way that I would have escalated through the companies that I did, through the states that I've lived in, the houses that I've had, that I know is because I planted a seed in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Okay, read uh, 2 Corinthians 9 when it talks about you will have all that you need, all sufficiency, to do all that you have to for all people and all that. It's deep that he promises you that and he is not a man that he should buy. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so first you've got to give and then you're going to save because you've already planned. You're going to save. You're going to repay me because you already got a plan on how you're going to repay it. And then what you have left, you're going to enjoy does that formula make sense to you? Yes. Can you start using that? Anybody? Say it again for me. Okay. If you don't think you can, some of your homework tonight is to pray about that. Because God knows if you don't believe it. Amen? And so if you don't think you can, I ask you to ask God to show you how you can do that. Amen? Amen. Yes, please. I talk about the fact that I honor you, Lord, for what you've given me. You see what I'm saying? That you're praying about it. That, that you know, while some people don't have a job, even though it's two hundred and fifty dollars, I dedicate this to you. I honor you. And we don't even take the time to thank God for what we have. I, I told you that I work in a homeless shelter, and it humbles me every time I leave because I need women and children who don't have a house, who don't have an apartment don't have their own key. It's a sign on the front door that says, if you are not here by 630, you will not get in. Can you imagine that? And so on my way home, I thank you, Lord, that I have a key to anything. 
is my tent. Does that make sense? And we don't do enough of dedicating what we have to God. If it's 35 cents, Lord, I dedicate this to you. I honor you with your money. Show me what you want me to do with it. Show me who you want me to help. Our pastor's wife, and I didn't even know this, he said it from the pulpit, and she was kind of mad about it. But every month, she asked God to show her somebody in church she can bless. And I guess I she didn't bless, I know, you know. But she asked God to show her, and we never did say how much she gives her. Every month, she just blesses somebody in church. And I'm like, man, that's beautiful. I want to do that. That is so cool. And so what if we give that with our money and say, show me, Lord, who you want me to bless? You can bless me to have my own house, that I can eat, that I'm not hungry, that I have some clothes, that I have sense and food, that I can get up. I dedicate that to you. Make sense, guys? And we will look at what we get different. Okay. Um, retirement tax. If you can't see this, I just want you to know that as of 2014, the average wealth in a household is $165,000 in retirement age. So the average person at about 55 years old, including their home, including the 401k, including the savings, only has $165,000. It takes about $52,000 to live at retirement on average. So that means that person only has three years of living to do. And so some of your homework tonight is, you got to figure out, if I retire at 66, and, and I'll go to that, if I retire at 66, I'm gonna talk about these facts, and the average person lives to about 84, I need about 25 years of money. How much do I need? So here's some of the facts. Um, from 1989, from 19, in 18, 1989, 71, 70% of people owned their home. In 2014, the last census that they counted this, only 60% of elderly people own their own home. Because it's one thing about having that asset, push it up the shelf, you have equity in it, you can sell it, and you can have some money. Or you can pay it off and you know you have some place to live. But only 60% of us have a home. The less the income, the less likely to not have a home or a home not paid for. 53% of those at retirement age are not ready to retire. Over half the people who can retire have not retired. So some of our work uh, situations is, is that the person that's 70 years old, 65, still works. Why? Because they cannot afford to retire, okay? And then it says 65% of those who are in lower income brackets are not ready. So the less you make, the more you're not ready. So if it's 10 people in the room who are 60 years old, seven can't retire, and that's me. And we have got to start thinking about it now. And then 50% of people between 25 and 50 say they won't be ready for retirement. So if you are young in this room, between 25 and 50, you are already saying in your head, when I get old, I won't be ready. And I encourage you to change that thinking. You gotta say, when I get old, I will be ready because I am preparing now. So don't just say I won't be ready. You got to do something about it. And I don't care what age you are, you be 56. Right now, I am still preparing to not work. Does that make sense? Okay. Any questions? Anything? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm hoping you can see this, but it's just saying that 87% of our money in retirement comes from Social Security. And I'm gonna. Has anybody been on SocialSecurity.gov? I will have, I will have the um, email, the website for you Sunday, because your homework for the next Thursday is to go at socialsecurity.gov, and it will tell you how much money you will have at retirement. Did you guys know that? Yeah. You can go at socialsecurity.gov, put in your social security number, your name, and it will pull up what you have made every year since you started working. And then it will say, if you retire at 66, this is how much you get if you retire at this. And it's very educational because you need to know ahead of time, at least this is how much I have coming in Social Security. 
Makes sense, guys. Okay, does everybody have access to a computer or laptop? Or, okay, and if you don't, I want you to go to a library and do that. But here's some inter interesting facts. If you can't see this, write it down. But if you were born, my flipper thing is working. But if you were born in 1938, wait, let me start at the top. If you were born in 1937 or earlier, you can start getting your money at the age of 65. Okay? If you were born in 1938 to 1941, it goes up. I was born in 1959, so that means I can't get all my money until I am 66 and 10 months. Does everybody see that? Because Social Security Administration is slowly inching it up to make it older because they're running out of money. Okay? And so I'm going to tell you right now, we have got to educate him. We've got to educate him because by the time they get 60 something, it won't be any money. It won't be a such thing probably as Social Security. And I'll tell you why. People are living longer. When Social Security was invented, the, um, they thought that we lived to about the age of 58, 60, like that. The average person is living to 84. And so that means they're giving out more Social Security and it's not as many people working, so a lot of people aren't putting in. Does that make sense? So you got to know how much you're going to have. Um, now, you can take your money down early. So for me, if I would take my money at the age of 62, I would lose 40% of what I would get if I waited until I was 66. And that's a hustle right there. The government is hustling on us on that. Because I'd rather you take it early. Because it'll save them 40% of the money. Make sense? So I would, make, I would lose 40% of what I would get at 66. And if I took it later, at 70, I would gain only 25% more. So they want you to take it later because they're banking. This is sick, but you ready? They're banking you will die before me. Because if you die, you don't get it. Make sense? Knowledge is power. Say that. Knowledge is power. Okay. And then if you get disability, um, you will get approximately 5% more than what you would get if you normally retire. And a lot of people don't know that, but actually, if you file for total disability, you get more than you get at normal Social Security. But you got to prove you're totally disabled and all that. So when you talk, start talking about retirement, at least know what you're going to get from Social Security. Another fact a lot of people don't know, write down 35 on your yellow page. Write down the number 35. What they do is calculate 35 years of work and they will take your highest pay that you made in 35 years and they average it and that's what you get in social security they do some calculation but they take 35 years of what you made and you didn't work 35 years you ready for this they put zero in the so you're divided by less yes and a lot of people don't know that isn't that interesting so definitely go to socialsecurity.gov and i'll have a website for you sunday Okay. Okay. And this just tells you that the average woman lives between 82 and 84. Men live between 79 and 81. If you made $50,000 a year, you would need $1.2 million when you retire to live comfortably. Now, if you don't live that long, of course, you need less. And if you don't need that much, but you need about 80% of what you make today. So whatever you make, if you make forty thousand, if you make thirty thousand, when you retire, you're gonna need about eighty percent of whatever you make, and then you just calculate how many years is you're expected to live. Now we know that's all of the guy, but at least you'll know how much money you need. Amen. All right. All right. Now, stop right there a minute, and let us pass this. What to pass out? Any questions? in detail in your book Sunday because the time is going to fly by and since I've been here three years and for those who've never seen them just let me know what you want to cover but I'd like you to mark your three biggest concerns you don't have to put a name on them 
because I want to make sure that I cover in detail what you are more concerned about, okay? So when we see tonight, can you just come and drop those off in this chair? So put just a check. You need some more? Okay. So put a check mark by the three areas that you're most concerned with. Any questions? Any questions? Because we will be diving into the book on Sunday. Everybody, 
Say it again if you got it. All right, thank you. Any questions on how to do this? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? I have a question from Gary Pitation. Okay. Okay, you were talking about investment. Well, because some people, they just have their money sitting in bank. They don't know what to do. And at the end of the year, you don't even see any increment on it. Yeah, like a feasible one that you can see. Uh -huh. At what stage, yeah, what can we start? Maybe as a young lady, I think, uh -huh. how can you start to invest into? It depends on how much risk you want to take. And what you need to do, you have to, got to sit down with a financial plan. My financial plan makes money when I make money. So you're going to get a reputable financial planner, and you're going to tell him, I want to be, he's going to ask you a series of questions. What's your lifestyle? Where do you want to be? How much money do you think you need when you retire? Um, um, what are your current assets, where assets, where they're sitting, and then he will take your money and diversify. My money is everywhere. I got money in apartment buildings, I own part of a, a golf course, I've got money in stocks and bonds and IRAs that I've never ever seen, don't know anything about, but he placed them there because I needed it someplace safe and that was going to make money. So it really depends on who you are, and you need a specialist to show you where your money should be. But whatever you do, get it out of a regular account and put it somewhere that's going to hurl you in up. The richest people, the three richest people in the world, guys, are groups of people are in technology and finance and real estate. And so the people who are in finances, they're making money because they're making money off of our money. And so you're right. You need to sit down and say, hey, I'm ready to play this game of my money making money for me. Because if you're working, you're working to get a dividend from what you do. If you're working every day and you don't get a dividend, you're not getting anything back. We might as well just be back in slavery. Make sense? Because at the end of the day, we don't have anything. We got some gym shoes. We got a coach purse. Okay? We got some hair. And it's time out for that. And in order for, am I right, my sister? And in order for it to be time out for that, you got to be sick to that and say, I am concerned about me. And I am about to leverage my power, because our power is in the Holy Spirit. Our power is in Jesus Christ. Everything that he has given us, everything that he wants us to have, is sitting there for us to take. But we got to get up and do it. Make sense? Because they, well, they've been playing. And I don't play, they're not liars. And especially if you a, a God fearing, know the Lord, doing the right thing, wealthy person. I'm not mad at you, okay? But it's time for us to say, I, I don't care how you think I look. What I got is about my future. I'll tell you a, a quick story. I'm from Detroit. And when I was in college, I was dating a guy who owned um, donut shops. He owned a chain of donut shops. And every time I saw him, he was covered in flour. He drove a station wagon. He smelled like donuts. Girl, he must have played a donut. Come on. It's coming to take me on a date. I'm looking cute. And he looking like the Pillsbury dog was still white on or whatever, whatever. And I'm, I, I can't take it. Please, change your car. Change clothes. Do you know how you look to people? And I will never forget this. He looked at me and he said, I know what I've got. And he's cutting people. Wow. That was deep because this guy looked like a bum and he was rich. And we are bums looking rich. You feeling me? You feeling me? And it's time out for that. So I don't care how you think I look and what I do. I, when I go to Detroit now, somebody say, You got to, oh, that's so cute. Girl, I got this at the Goodwill. And my sister hates when I say that. Why do you that? Because I don't care. And people need to know that you can put it in the cleaners and clean it up. And while they pay 200 I pay 20 because I need to put that 180 in my investment so it can make money for me. You feel me? Yeah. And we got to wake up for that because it is a trick of the devil. I am not paying $600 for a purse when I don't have $600. That's stupid. Uh, Amen? Yeah. Okay? Uh, we are Detroit, I want to get on the flight and go. If you got to go to Nigeria, don't you want to 
get on a plane and go. Amen. Amen. And then I'm going to have to gather you up and pray that I get the money and you give me a hundred and you give me two and I'm going to put this in my bed. I kind of know the devil is a lie. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, you asked me that, my sister. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I want to leave something for my boys. 
I want to, if, if y'all decide to have a girl's trip and want to take me to Nigeria, I want to go. Because you know I'm a family, you heard Right. So you want to hang out and you want me to go with you? I don't want to go without saying, where am I going to get the money? So first of all, it starts with your dream. But don't miss it. You're right. And that makes people scared to even invest. But I promise you, they have protection. I'll tell you a little bit. So when stock goes up, bonds go down. They balance out each other. So I have money in bonds and money in stock. So when one drops, they they, they double lock. Okay? And it's stuff like that. So at six percent you're still making the decent money. Your money's still making money for you. So I don't want to get rich quick because if it plummets, even with the little money I had in stock, I lost substantially in the last two weeks. But it's had it's already returned, it's already leveling out, but you just cannot take that kind of chance. And anybody who tells you put all your money in stock, be very concerned. Anybody who tells you I'll have you rich by this time next year is a lot from the pit of hell, don't believe it. Because anything quick has trouble. Make sense? All right. Amen. Um, that's it. You have homework. Your level page at 95. Okay. And then we pray for you. Yes. Say it. Say it. Uh huh. Absolutely. You can move it 